We're talking about substitute dominance today, sub fives. Now, if you watch the videos about primary cadences, primary dominance and secondary dominance, this is level three. What are sub fives? If I take a look at the primary dominant in a key, meaning a G7 in the key of C, I'm gonna play a three note version of it, omit the fifth. I have a root, I have this flatted seventh, and I have this third, G, F, B. Check out what happens when I switch that G note for a D flat, meaning a note that's a tritone away. I get to keep the seventh, the flatted seventh and the third, but now they've flipped, meaning the F that used to be G's flatted seventh is now the third of this D flat, and that B that used to be the third of G is now its flatted seventh. So it's that kind of relationship that we're gonna go after time and time again. That's a tritone substitution, and really that's where sub fives come from. Now, if you know secondary dominance, and you just go through all the secondary dominance, and you do that again and again and again, you are going to arrive at all of the sub fives. So sub five of one is built on the flatted second degree of the scale, and it resolves to the one chord. Sub five of two is built on the flatted third degree of the scale and resolves to your two minor, right? Sub five of three is built on the fourth degree of the scale, and it resolves to your three minor. Sub five of four is built on your flatted fifth degree, and it resolves to your four chord. Sub five of five is built on your flatted sixth degree, and resolves to your five chord. You know that one from any minor blues. Sub five of six is built on the flatted seventh degree. Now let's hear them again, just resolving without, without those secondary dominants. We got sub five of one, sub five of two, sub five of three, sub five of four, sub five of five, sub five of six. They all get the same exact mode, always. Lydian dominant from every one of those degrees. What's Lydian dominant? One, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven. Like Lydian with a dominant seventh, with a flatted seventh. So from D flat, it's this. Resolving to the key of C. From that flatted third, right, the sub five of two, it's this. Resolving to the key of C gives me D Dory. Sub five of four. Sub five of five. Sub five of six. If you combine the knowledge of secondary dominance and substitute dominance, now you can explain a dominant chord built on any degree of the chromatic scale. Let's test that out. If it's built on the root, it's five of four. If it's built on the flatted second, it's sub five of one. If it's built on the two, it's five of five. If it's built on the flatted third, it's sub five of two. If it's built on the third, it's five of six. If it's built on the fourth, it's sub five of three. If it's built on the flatted fifth, it's sub five of four. If it's built on the fifth, it's the primary dominant. If it's built on the flatted six, it's sub five of five. If it's built on the six, it's five of two. If it's built on the flatted seventh, it's sub five of six. If it's built on the seventh, it's five of three. So with this method and the method described in the previous video, you're gonna have the knowledge of which mode to play over whatever dominant chord you see in a key. This method obviously does not cover every possibility, but it will get you to hit the ground running by playing mixolydian, mixolydian flat two, flat six, or lydian dominant, and knowing which one is which. Cool. Subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, join our Patreon. There's tons of content on this channel already, but there's a lot of new stuff coming every day. So be sure to follow 
and like us and do all the things. See you next time. Bye-bye.